Hello, I'm XP Love Cat, and welcome to my Masks of Narlithotep series, the final chapter, China. So I'm going to be going through my top tips for playing this chapter, and if you missed some of my other walkthroughs, they'll be in the description below. I've gone through every single chapter in the Masks series to help you run this game. That being said, there's about to be a ton of spoilers. This chapter mainly takes place in Shanghai, China, and there is a plethora of adversaries, a lot of content, some key plot points revealed, and the chance to meet a couple of the Carlisle Expedition members. China is a long chapter. It is the second longest right behind England, and it took my group about six to seven sessions, or roughly 28 hours. So there's a lot of content here, and it was by far my favorite chapter of the whole campaign. And now I'm going to dive into the reasons why you should consider playing the China chapter. The first is the investigators get the chance to meet two members of the Carlisle expedition, potentially a third if they do some traveling to Hong Kong, but it's a really awesome opportunity to actually meet face to face with these people that you've been tracking and trying to figure out what their goal is. So it was a really awesome experience for my investigators to get to see these people in person. Another reason to play is there are major plot points that are going to be revealed in this chapter and the pieces are going to start coming together for the investigators and understanding what is their goal and how are they going to achieve this goal and how can your best investigators help prevent this goal from happening? So there's just a ton of information that's relevant to the main plot that comes together in this chapter. Now you may be wondering, is it a bad thing if my players get here early in the campaign? And I would say, don't worry about it. My investigators went third to China, so their path went America, England, China. And although they did get some pieces put together maybe a little bit quicker than other groups would have, the campaign worked out just fine even though they went to China a little bit early. Another reason to play this is there's just so much content in this chapter. It's really juicy and full of a lot of really fun interactions for the investigators. So I think it's worth diving into all these different elements and experiencing what China has to offer. My final reason is that the investigator is going to have to make some pretty tough decisions. I always enjoy when this happens at the table and they have to debate with one another and investigate and make some pretty tough decisions based on maybe not a lot of information. They have to learn about all the different factions in China and figure out who they're going to side with. Now I always like to mention reasons why you might want to skip one of the chapters in this campaign, but for China, there's no reason you should skip this chapter. It is absolutely a core piece of this campaign. If you want to play a reduced length campaign, I recommend including America, England, and China. Moving on to setting callouts. This actually might be the first time your investigators feel really out of place. So this is a potentially a foreign environment if they're not from Asia, and it could be a cultural and language barrier that they have to overcome here. And this might be the first time they encounter this in the campaign. Keep in mind that at this time in China, there's a very low percentage of expats actually living in the country. So it's likely that your investigators will feel out of place if they're not Chinese. And as a result of many foreign wars, the economy is pretty much in shatters at this point. So there's a lot of disruption. There's not really a firm central government force at this time. So there's different factions that are starting to arise and fight for power. You're likely to see a lot of rallies and picket lines as they're going and traveling throughout the country. So keep kind of this unrest in mind as you set the scene for the environment in this chapter. The cult in China is called the Order of the Bloated Woman. The cultists are almost exclusively Chinese and their rituals are practiced offshore in unpopulated islands. They have a weird tattoo inside their left armpits and they use a sickle as their primary weapon. They rarely use guns. In addition, they have a link to a deep one colony which will come up later in this chapter. Here are the main NPCs that you need to be aware of as you're planning. The first one is Jack Brady. 
Now this is the last sane member of the Carlisle expedition. I think it's important that you make Jack hard to find, but not impossible. He is a key part to this chapter, so I think it is really important that the investigators do end up finding him. But part of the fun is actually seeing what the different avenues are to find where Jack is hiding. And it's kind of nice to have investigators settle a little bit into China and get to familiar with the area before they immediately find Jack. So just keep that in mind as you're planning. It's likely that he's very suspicious of the investigators and he's quite intimidating. He is an ex-Marine after all. A very important tip here is to not try and memorize his monologue. There is just too much information that needs to be right in this story. So I think it's about three pages that is in the book of what Jack explains about what actually happened at the Carlisle expedition. And there's just a ton of really key details here that I think it's worth practicing reading it out loud in an engaging way, but not worth the effort of trying to memorize it. In addition, Jack is very knowledgeable, so he has a lot of information about all the different cults around the world, but depending on when your investigators get here, if it's earlier in the campaign, I would try to hold back some of that information so there's still the element of discovery at the other chapters that they go to. And finally, in the book, they do mention that Jack may accompany to try and ward different areas with the investigators, but I found it more beneficial just to keep Jack in China and have his base of operations there so he doesn't become too integral to your group and they can still feel the experience of doing things on their own and just having Jack there in China. Next is Ho Feng. He is the high priest of the Order of the Bloated Woman. He's an incredibly successful businessman and he also has a spotless reputation around town. A potential to make him a little bit more unique in this chapter is to make him a little bit short with investigators. Now in the book they describe him as being very welcoming and open with certain information, but I prefer to have this person more as a quick businessman who's just trying to get things done because it pulls him apart from some of the other priests in the book and makes him a little bit more unique in that realm. Physically, he's short, fat, and is always smoking, so I felt like this fit his personality just a little bit better. Next we have Carl Stanford, who is a incredibly powerful sorcerer. His goal is to find the seven cryptical books of San, so he's been chasing this and Brady, which makes him a pretty core connection to this entire chapter. It's an option to use Stanford as someone who is following the investigators around and causing a hint of paranoia. It's also useful to keep in mind that he is incredibly powerful with magic, so having some spells that you think would be appropriate for him pre-prepared would be helpful during play. And overall, he's such a fun character and is really flexible in this part of the campaign to use him as you need him. So just always keep in mind that Carl is an option depending on your different goals and how the investigators play things out. Finally, we have Sir Aubrey Penhew, who is another member of the Carlisle Expedition, but he is definitely insane. <laughs> and he will be at the island once investigators go there. He's either going to be in the workshop or his office or potentially participating in a ritual, but he doesn't really leave the island these days as he's working on his rocket. Keep in mind that because of Narlothotep's power that he's absorbed, he looks 55, but he acts about 20 in terms of his energy and ability to do certain things. So this is gonna probably catch your investigators off guard. A really useful way to portray Penhu is actually to focus on his obsession with our Narlisotep and the great plan in his rocket. So obviously he is all in and invested. And so anything that's gonna disrupt this is going to cause him to go a little crazy and do weird things that a normal person wouldn't necessarily do. So keeping in mind this obsession and what's driving him is going to help you portray 
him when investigators do go to the island. So this next section I'm inserting specifically for China because it's a little bit unique in that it has all of these different factions for your players to be aware of and potentially investigate. So I'm gonna lay out these factions and just some key points about them. It's likely that the chapter is going to end in a giant battle on Grey Dragon Island and it might be useful for your players to have allies along the way. So here are the different factions that you should be aware of. The first is the Japanese Navy, which is a connection with Captain Esoge. You're likely to meet the captain at the Stumbling Tiger Bar, which is very early in the chapter. The captain is an undercover agent for the Navy, and they know that some sort of rumors have been going around about a potential weapon being built, AKA the rocket. So he is there to investigate and might be useful for your players. It's possible for him to provide tactical Navy support, but also get investigators along the right path if need be. And my tip here is don't make it too difficult for your players to know that he's from the Navy, but do make it a bit challenging for them to actually garner support. The next faction is Madame Lin's Empire, and she is the owner of the Flower Girl houses. Her home is where she keeps her occult and art collection, and likely where your players are going to end up meeting her. She knows about the Order of the Bloated Woman, but she's not directly involved, and she doesn't want trouble. This will probably be a really fun part for you to play because honestly, she's not inherently against the cult. She's just not a part of it. In fact, she's willing to kind of use them and leverage them if it gets her what she needs. She does have quite a bit of power and influence and is able to work people the way that she needs for her own benefit. It was fun to watch my players kind of argue back and forth whether she was a part of the cult and was someone evil or if she might actually be useful for them, which it ends up that she could be. It's important to keep in mind that Brady stole the seven cryptical books of Son from her and she wants it back. This book is a major plot point because it tells investigators how to ward the different points that are going to ultimately open this great gate. So making sure that Madame Lin is very forward about her goal to find this book is going to be important for your investigators to understand what's going on here. She has an army of loyal henchmen. And in fact, if there's anyone in the group with 75 or higher appearance points, or in the case that you don't have anyone that fits the bill, perhaps the person with the highest appearance points, she is likely to try and recruit them. Um, it happens with my group that one of the players did decide to retire their investigator and leave them in China because they made a pretty good connection with Madame Lin and decided to join her empire. So that might be just a fun way to explore different options with this plotline. Next is New China and specifically the Firm Action Faction. This is led by Chu Min and New China is a revolutionary vigilante organization and they're training to launch a campaign against the corrupt via violence. Jack Brady and Chu Min are working together to prepare the Firm Action Faction to attack Great Dragon Island. And I found it really fun to play Chu Min as very protective of Brady. Brady is really trying to hide the fact that he's in China. He doesn't want to interact with Penhu in any sort of way and is just trying to get this translation done so he can figure out the spell that can protect against this evil that's happening around him. New China is likely the straightest line ally that your players will have. It makes sense because they're already kind of plotting to have this attack happen. So it's actually pretty easy for them to align themselves with this faction. Also a note, there is a training facility and there's quite a lot of men and women training there. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to allow my investigators to spend time in exchange for improving a physical skill. So brawl or anything else physical that they really wanted to try and improve, I gave them a role to try and do that if they exchanged a week or so of their time to be able to train. The next faction is the Deep Ones. So the Deep Ones are actually aligned with the cult here in China, but it is possible that your players will do a stakeout mission at the island or interact with them on the Dark Mistress yacht and be able to find some sort of common ground or be able to influence them to their side. There's just some possibilities open with the Deep Ones that I thought it was worth mentioning here. 
And finally, we have the Green Gang, which is a criminal secret society. This is a smaller mention in the chapter, but could potentially expand if needed, and if your players kind of are going more of the criminal route to get things done. They essentially control all of crime in Shanghai during this time, and the group may come in handy if investigators get themselves in a pinch. The Green Gang is likely able to help, just make sure they owe a hefty favor in return. Next, we have key locations, and the first is the Stumbling Tiger. This is probably the first locations your investigators will visit, so take time describing the atmosphere. It's in a district of bars, and there's gambling dens and flower girl houses, and on their way here, it's possible they run into picket lines and rallies, and it's a really good opportunity to just set the foreign stage that is this chapter. They'll meet the bar owner here, McChum, who is pretty difficult to get talking. While he does have a lot of information, he's protecting himself because he's afraid that he might get killed if someone finds out he spills certain information, which might happen here in your campaign if investigators do get him to talk. Overall, your investigators should leave here with a decent amount of leads. They should know that Jack Brady is in China, that Ho Feng, or at least the Order, is in existence and that is controlling this area, that the island exists and or that there is a weapon that they need to be aware of, and finally that the yacht, the Dark Mistress, is something that they should be looking out for on their adventures here. Next we have the Ho Feng Import and Export, which is a very large warehouse that is extremely well guarded. In fact, there's at least six guards there when the warehouse is not in operation, so it should be very difficult for your investigators to actually get inside of this warehouse. And if they do get inside and they get caught, the consequences should be pretty extreme. Just remember to give your players a few nice hints that if they do break into the warehouse that it could go pretty poorly for them. And the reason for this is that what they find inside is pretty juicy. There's a map of the Grey Dragon Island, mythos artifacts, and parts of the rocket. These are all pretty intense clues, so making their effort worth it will be important for this part of the chapter. They might not end up getting in the warehouse, and that's okay too. I would definitely recommend that you have Ho Feng's yacht very visible from wherever your investigators are, and if they decide to investigate the yacht, have some leads going to Ho Feng's mansion, which is a super fun part of this campaign. It's also worth adjusting the security on the yacht. If they don't get into the warehouse, perhaps the security is a bit lighter on this yacht so they can get a little bit more information while they're here. Next we have Ho Feng's mansion, which this is one of the most fun parts of this chapter in my opinion. There's a really nice map provided of the mansion, so make sure to utilize that. And there are a couple key things that might cause investigators to lose some sanity here. The first thing they're likely to stumble onto is Ho Feng's daughter, who is actually quite insane for witnessing something terrible happening to her mother. Ho Feng's daughter only eats live things, so like worms and insects that the staff have caught out in the garden. So the creepiness is pretty much to the max when your players will stumble upon his daughter. They may end up stumbling on the Shrine of the Bloated Woman, which has a ton of power rules and potentially some major sanity loss. So just be aware of that as they're stumbling through this mansion. This is where Carl Stanford can bring a lot of fun to this chapter. I really approach this as Carl is out to mess with the investigators and have fun with them, as opposed to trying to outright kill them. So. This was an opportunity to use his powerful sorcery in some creative ways to either scare them or mess with them, but again, not trying to kill them. I mean, this guy has a sword cane, so he's already pretty cool. The story from my campaign is that Carl used Mind Exchange, uh, kind of a semi-version of it because the exact spell in the book requires them to be close in relationship to one another, but in this version I decided that it would be okay just to switch minds there since he was so powerful, and it's a temporary effect. Once this mind transfer took place, one of my investigators that was a part of the transfer failed their power roll, lost a decent amount of sanity, and had a bout of madness. So not only is my investigator in a new body, 
he is also now having a bout of madness, which resulted in him only being able to say one word for a certain amount of time. And because I was not very creative, the one word that I made him say was China. <laughs> So he's riding around this compound in Carl Stanford's body, yelling, China, 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 and trying to d communicate with all the different players to tell them what's going on. But obviously the other investigators are totally in the dark and don't have any idea what is happening. And Carl Stanford is trying his best to act like nothing's wrong and try to get the investigators away from the mansion. So this scene was totally chaotic and really funny and a really awesome memory that I have from this setting. I also want to point out that Stanford has a gate box, which is a lock box essentially that has a gate linked to another location. Now this could be used in a ton of different ways depending on what your investigators are trying to achieve or what they're struggling with or what they need more clues to. You can really move this second box location to adjust what's going to work best for your situation. Now my, my investigators did not find the gate box when they were in the mansion. However, there was some chaos that happened later on Grey Dragon Island that I actually decided to put the twin box there instead. And as a result, there was some transferring back and forth of Stanford from the island back to the mansion and one of my investigators following him through the gate. So it added a really cool element to this chapter and I love that it's really flexible too. So keep in mind that this gate box exists and be creative about how you can use it. Next is the Dark Mistress, which is Penhue's yacht. The crew are a bunch of Deep One hybrids, so if your investigators do stumble on this yacht, the horror feel should be very palpable here. There's some weird half-human, half-fishy type creatures running this yacht, and potentially your players don't even understand what they are. In addition, the captain is suffering from radiation poisoning, so his body is a bit deformed and struggling with that as well. Now this radiation poisoning is coming from the meteorite that is housed inside of the yacht which makes it go super fast. So keep in mind there are mechanics related to this if the players do get involved with this, this meteorite and try to figure out what it is. There could be some radiation side effects for them as well. And finally we have Grey Dragon Island. Something that's mentioned briefly in the book that I did implement on the way to the island is the wave of oblivion hitting their ship. So when this happens, they will have to make a successful strength and dex check to not get thrown into the water. Now the water is full of some sharks maybe, but more importantly deep ones that are trying to pluck them under. If they do get thrown into the water, they then would be required to make a swim check. And if they've passed, they're good to go. They are able to get on some sort of debris or the ship again. If they fail this swim check, then a final luck check might be appropriate here. Either way, failing the swim check will make them wash up onto shore. If they fail the luck check, they'll end up with half hit points. And if they pass the luck check, maybe they just lose about three hit points instead. This is also an important part to say that this check is not meant to kill anyone, but it is added to have the stakes high and add a little bit more fun to the story as they're traveling to the island. So we have Grey Dragon Island, which is the base for building Sir Aubrey's rocket. This is also a dormant volcano, so it makes the setting really cool and fun to play with. Keep in mind there is a village here which would include some Deep Run hybrids running around. I have to note that the Deep One connection felt a little bit tacked on to the chapter and I wish it was fleshed out just a little bit more. My players ended up visiting the village and wanted to pursue this line a bit more than I had expected. So just be prepared to either improv or think about a little bit more the Deep One's motivations, what they're actually wanting out of the connection with the Order, so that you can play this out if the investigators want to pursue it. On this island, there's also the Chamber of the Bloated Woman. Make sure to give the map to your players, but also be really careful of describing where everything is. It's very likely that a massive battle is going to be taking place here, so it's very important that the investigators are all in the same place of where everything is located, 
what everything looks like and what they can use to their advantage in terms of cover or positioning. There's gonna be a lot of beings in this location, so it's gonna be worth spending a bit of time explaining all of these different parties. You're gonna have the slaves with their oily caps on, which are part of a sugar that lives in the pool here. There's gonna be helpless victims in cages. Sir Aubrey's going to be somewhere in this whole mess and potentially Stanford as well. My number one tip is to let your investigators kind of take in everything that is going on and observe a little bit before Sir Aubrey comes right out to greet them. He's likely tirelessly working away in his warehouse or on the rocket itself. Although having a ritual at this time is an option, if you're earlier in the campaign, I wouldn't re really recommend it because there's already just so much going on. Now, perhaps this is, if this is the final chapter, it might make sense to make it more climactic and have this ritual going on. But if you're earlier in the campaign, I think it's better just to have the day-to-day -day activities happening and your investigators coming in at that time. Now, depending on who all your players came with, it might not be feasible to do all of the dice rolling. So keep in mind that you can always keep some of the fighting in the backdrop and background and focus really on the investigators and the key NPCs, Penhue, potentially Stanford, in this specific battle and location. Ultimately, your players are going to want to address the rocket. Either they need to sabotage it or destroy it or do something with it in order for this great gate to end up not opening. There is one sidetrack scenario and check out my guest blog post for the Prospero House where I go through all of the different sidetrack scenarios. But this one is called The Demon Cabinet of Mr. Young. I ultimately felt like it was just a pretty short tack on section to this overall chapter, so not 100% necessary to play, and it was on the lower end of enjoyment for me, but overall it could be a nice break for your players if China is feeling like it's getting a little bit bogged down. What I did like about the sidetrack was having fun reading the investigators' auras and telling fortunes and having a little bit of fun there and being able to trick them into the demon cabinet. The scenario can certainly add some flavor, but just keep in mind it's going to be a smaller portion to the overall chapter. Okay, <laughs> that was a lot. But here is the minimum that your players should have before they leave China. The first is they should know who Ho Feng is and they should know about the Order of the Bloated Woman. They should have met Jack Brady, which although is not 100% necessary, I found it was a key point to the plot and very enjoyable for my players to meet him. So just keep that in mind and perhaps prioritize it a little bit more before moving on. Your players should understand that warding these different points is going to be how they can stop this great plan from coming to fruition. Ultimately, they should feel how massive this plan is and how global everything is. All of these factions and the rocket and everything that's happening in China and all the different players involved should really feel massive to the investigators. And finally, they should have visited the island and know about the rocket, ideally destroying it or at least having a plan to take care of it in the future. And that was the China chapter. Thank you so much for watching. I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. Right now I'm doing everything myself from filming and editing and scripting and playing the games. And although I'm super passionate about it, it makes my time for getting these videos out pretty long. So I'm looking to hire a video editor and any support you'd be willing to share would be awesome. I will have a link in the description below, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Bye.